Hey everybody, welcome back to another full self-driving beta video. The point of my channel is to share my experience using Tesla's FSD beta software in the northwest suburbs of Chicago. I have been a tester since October 24th, 2021, and I just want to emphasize the point that a lot of my previous videos may come across as being negative, overly critical, or focusing too much on the flaws. And I want people to understand that while I do focus on those, it's because I'm an engineer and I like to point out the areas where it can improve rather than focusing on everything it does so great. Because in the initial stages, you'll see I was screaming and laughing. Oh, that's so cool. Oh my gosh. And driving around because it just impressed the socks off of me. Now, of course, over time that wears off and it's not, it's not like you're screaming and excited every day. There it says upcoming lane two. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, okay. I can only speak from my own experience using beta, and I will say that it is very, very convenient in my case for the Northwest suburbs. Now, if you're in the middle of a city in a very urban, very populated area, this person's crossing, well done. I think I just got the bird. Oof. There's, there's some work that's needed. So just bear in mind the environment that you're driving in and then hopefully that can help you evaluate and understand the limitations a little bit better. But yes, I am extremely excited with the current state and wanted to emphasize that before we get into today's video. Hey everybody, John here. Welcome back to another full self-driving beta video. I am on version 10.12.2 with my long range rear wheel drive Tesla Model 3. Anybody that's new to the beta program, Welcome and congratulations. I heard some of the safety score 93 people were getting in. That's really, really exciting. I hope you enjoy these tests. Just be aware that you do need to be ready to take over at a moment's notice. It is not complete and it can make mistakes at the worst times possible. As I mentioned in a previous video, it can be embarrassingly awkward. So you do need to be cognizant of the people behind you. And I've gone back and forth on a debate of having a bumper sticker for my car, whether that is, please be patient student driver or baby AI on board or FSD beta robo taxi. Any indication I think is helpful, but it could also be the opposite. Someone could get annoyed with that and then try to mess with you. So. It's debatable. Right now I have no bumper sticker and I think I'm gonna stick with that for the time being. But here I'm in the Northwest suburbs. I'm at a doctor's office and I'm gonna see how the car can react to me taking it from the doctors to my home. So I've been a tester since October 24th, 2021 when 10.3 came out. And I'm really looking forward to version 11, which is gonna combine the highway stack with the city street stack. So everything's gonna be one. And it also with 10.13, Elon Musk just tweeted that it's going to be relying exclusively on the camera data and no longer relying on GPS data combined. So that'll be really interesting. And I don't know when that version will come out, but based on history, it sounds like these versions are coming out now maybe once a month. When I first got in, it was every week or every other week. It was really quite frequent. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention really quick before we get started. I signed up to be an Uber driver to catch uh, passengers reactions to full self-driving beta. I do have a, bit, a video queued up for that. I'll be coming, I'll be releasing that pretty soon. Also, a buddy of mine just got a new Tesla Model 3 long range dual motor car. He picked it up last week and I did film his delivery. So I'll be posting that along with the checklist that he has. So if anybody's looking to purchase a Tesla, they can learn from his experience. All right, so here we are, I am in park. And for anybody that's new, I didn't know how you engage this system to begin with. And to be honest, you can't just start it while you're in park, you need to put it in drive. So if I put it in drive right now, you're gonna see right now, since I'm in a parking lot, it has no idea where its surroundings are. Typically you do need to move around a little bit in order for it to figure out where it is. But if you're in a parking spot where you're facing forward, you cannot ever enable it because the car will not go in reverse today. So uh, since I, I do have to drive in reverse, I, this is a manual process. So I'm gonna start out by backing out of this spot and then the camera should detect kind of where I am. So here in any second now, you're gonna see on the left side, the visualization is going to change and you'll see some red lines show up that kind of pop into display. It might not happen here until I put it into drive. So now that I'm ready to go, I'll put it into drive and there we go. So now we get the visualization of all the cars and we're ready to go. So I am dialed in for my final destination and I'm in drive uh, and I'm waiting for the steering wheel icon to show up right up here. 
And as you can see, oh, there it is, and it just popped up. So as soon as you see these red boundaries, that kind of gives it more bearing as far as where it is. Now it just went away. So sometimes what you have to do is put it into drive, move a little bit, and then it will turn on. So I'm just gonna start driving a little bit here. Okay, there it is, now it turned on. So I always like to orient my car so that it's straight and then turn it on. So I'm ready to go. You can see these people here in front of me. The car is picking up on them. I'm gonna drive a little bit here and then wait for it again. It's popping up right there. And then I uh, just went away and turn it back on. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna see if we can get us out of the parking lot. The right turn signal just went on. It, it, it's a little bit confused, not sure the path. You can see the blue line, it's kind of coming in and out. I'm surprised it's not moving at all. And I don't know why the right turn signal is on. So I am gonna to have to nudge it forward here a little bit with the accelerator pedal. And see now it turns a more solid blue. Now if I let up on it, there we go. So now it found its bearing and it's gonna come out of this parking lot and hopefully turn right, which is where it's supposed to go here. We're gonna see how it does. Uh, oh, see it accelerates pretty quickly there. And now coming up here, ooh, okay, so, oh boy. Yeah, that was uh, almost an accident. So it went straight out into the road and the cars were coming and that was very, very dangerous. So uh, I had to take over there. Uh, that's, yeah, that's a problem. I need to report that. So uh, for those of you that are new, hit that report button whenever something like that happens. It really should not have done that. Anytime it does something that is unusual or poor behavior, definitely report it. I don't know how much of that data Tesla is using, but it's still important in my opinion to submit that data point. Okay, so now it's clear to go. I'm gonna manually come out of here. That just scared the crap out of me because those cars are coming 40 miles an hour and I was uh, hanging out in the lane there. Okay, so now that we're driving here, I'm gonna turn it back on and it's gonna accelerate forward to 30, to actually 40 miles per hour. I have it set to go five over the speed limit and this speed limit is 35 miles per hour. Getting over to the left, I think we need to get over even more. Here we go, one more. Okay, a little bit late to get over, but we are now in the left turn lane. So as soon as this light turns green, we are gonna be proceeding through this intersection. This intersection is interesting because at the same time we turn left, the traffic in front of us is gonna turn left. I came through this intersection when I was still on the initial version, the 10.3, I believe, uh, when I first got into beta and it did surprisingly well. It hesitated though, mid intersection. Nobody was behind me. So I let it, I let it decelerate or slow down. Uh, so I, I was monitoring obviously the cars behind me. Now I have the backup camera so you can see very clearly who's behind me and who's not. But when this turns green, we're going to be in the same scenario because we're in the right left turn lane. So it will be the exact same situation that I ran into before. So I see a couple cars piling up in the left turn lane over there. So this is going to be very similar to that previous test, but several versions later. And it, what's really nice is that there's nobody behind me at the moment. And you can see here, if I zoom in, there's really only one car up there turning left. Now I can't see as well as the cameras can see but I only see one car up there in the left in the left turn lane. Okay, so it's green. Okay, now we're going forward. Nobody behind us. So okay, there there are more than one. So coming up here. Okay, no problem there. It it, it handled that really well. No hesitation. Went through the intersection just fine. And now we have a straight shot on this road all the way until we turn left. So about six miles on this road should be pretty straightforward, not anticipating too many issues. Okay, so I am seeing a police vehicle here on the right side of the road and the lights are blinking. And as you can see, there's no indication on my screen about this police vehicle. So sometimes on the highways, you will get a visualization or not a visualization, but it'll give you a message saying emergency vehicle detected, slowing down. But I've not seen that on the side streets.
All right, getting into the right lane here, there was no indicator that went on, so no turn signal. And that was a little bit sloppy. Nobody behind me, so I let it do what it, what it did there. But, I, you know, I, I definitely wouldn't have done that, and there's no reason for it to have done that. Sometimes it'll say a message moving into a faster lane. There was no message there. Still very unclear as to why it changed lanes, especially considering that in four miles we are going to be turning left. Okay, it's initiating a turn signal there and then it went off. So there is some traffic coming up here on the left. I think it was trying to get in the left turn lane. I did not see exactly where it was going. Now, one thing that's interesting is I do not have my side cameras turning on when the when the turn signal goes on. And that's just because the delay, I don't know. I'm just, I, I don't want it to get worse over time with delays. So I figured turning up, if you tap on it though, it will pull it up on the left. So that's something I didn't realize until later. So if you tap on it again, it'll always pull up the camera there. So that's kind of nice. So you can on demand see the camera. Okay, so it did get in the left turn lane very nicely there. Uh, found a right, a good gap. It again is getting into the left turn lane without any turn signal. That seems to be a habit and it's still, okay, now it finally turned it on. It never seems to do that. It's never been able to do that early enough. A, a couple, I should rephrase that. A couple times it will turn it on before getting in the turn lane, but probably eight or nine out of 10 times it will not do that. So that just doesn't give the person behind you any indication that you're gonna be executing a turn. However, the good thing is that it, it never slows down. So it will continue to move forward. It, it doesn't you know, get in the way of someone behind you. So the car in front of me, they just opened up their driver door. Let's see if we can see the visualization. Okay, they just closed it. So it didn't uh, show it on the display, but they just very briefly there opened up their door. It'd be neat if they opened it up again and it showed up on the display. I'll have to get someone that I know uh, in front of me to test that. It'd be pretty neat to, to show on the camera here, on the visualization. Okay, so green arrow and accelerating forward, someone right behind us. And nice and smooth through the turn. I've never had any issues there where it's slowed down in the middle of the intersection. A couple times it will happen in other areas. So you do need to be ready to step on it in case it uh, decides to be awkward. But uh, with that said, uh, we're, we're pretty much here. So uh, thanks a lot for watching guys. Uh, if you like my content, please hit the like button, subscribe, and you don't wanna miss out on the Uber drive that's coming up and my friend's delivery. So thanks a lot guys, we'll see you in the next one.